Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, Disembodied Hands, Quindy, Justin, John, and Kiki! Ah! <laughs> hi, everybody. Kiker says hi, too. Kiker says she's not feeling, she wasn't feeling very well this weekend and kept mommy like, oh my god, oh my god. She woke me up like twice at night. Yes, but now she's doing better. She just, unfortunately, she has this unhabited... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, now we're nomming. One second. Eviction! Eviction! She's going to learn that eviction means leave the room. Good girl! Good girl! Good eviction, Paul! Good girl! Yay! I love training my dogs with, like, words that make other people look at you askance. I can't help it. Ah. They're very amber, Twisted Oma. They're not the, some of our dogs actually do have golden eyes. Like we have all three shades of brown in our breeds. So some of our dogs have very light eyes and they actually look gold. Hers are actually amber. So they're the medium. They're what Kiri had. And then we also have dogs that have very dark brown. But yeah, it's, it's genetics. The dark brown is dominant and the amber is uh, in the middle. And then the most recessive is the, the gold. But yeah, it's a golden brown. It's really pretty. But yeah, the light shining in her face there really lit her eyes up, so. But yes, hi, hi everybody. How was your weekend? My weekend was horribly sleep deprived. Oh, I had a horrible wake up in the middle of the night and not get back to sleep for an hour period on on uh, Saturday and then Sunday night, or no, not, not last night, but the Saturday night I had a kiki explosion. She woke me up twice. <sighs> I'm a light sleeper, so that like disrupts the heck out of me. Oh, good. I'm glad your body is no longer trying to kill you, Shadow Raven. That's progress, right? Progress, progress. Hey, Turgeon. So, so I know, I know that that uh, Turgeon has been waiting for this announcement, but and I don't know how many people we have yet. But I am here to enlist you all, all of you who actually are like in the mood to. I'm never, never saying that you have to at all. But hey, Turgeon, look what I have. Look what I have. It's real. It's real. I know you've been asking questions about it, so I'm totally like singling you out. It's real, folks. So you can read it on Kindle Unlimited. And if you go down to under read for free, if you want to actually support me to a higher level, then $4.99, you can buy it. Yes, book is here. You got the book already. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, so what I need, what I need, yeah, so, so, okay, so if you support me on Kindle Unlimited and you read the book, you, I'm probably going to get, like, like, two bucks, and if you support me by actually buying the book, I'll get 350 for the ebook, so, you know, either way, either way, it's all good, so you can find it by searching East of the Sun Becker, and I do have an author page, but it's pending, like, everything, I put it up really late last night, because I wanted to give Kindle time to process, because sometimes they can take days, um, and and often 24 hours but they say four hours this was actually up faster uh so actually can uh amazon was lightning fast for once but uh but yeah what i really need is for anybody who buys it when you get it read it through and if you see any errors let me know right away so we're, this is called a soft launch so what we're doing the business the biz speak here we're doing a soft launch so that means my trusted friends and allies you guys um, get to look at it and let me know if there's anything wrong with it. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to download and order a copy too, obviously. Um, but <laughs> thank you, Kernico. If you like it, tell your roommate. I know they, they liked the cover. <laughs> and then our second mission. So the first mission is to find any problems early before I put it up on my Facebook page and stuff like that. So I'm not even going to tell a bunch of people that it's up yet. I'm, I'm, I'm depending on y'all, um, and my second read through. Uh, but so if you notice anything that looks wonky, any layout problems, any paragraphs that aren't like, any, you know, just let me know. Because it's super easy to fix it at this stage. All I have to do is fix it, upload it, I can fix it in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, you guys are special, special. Oh yeah, it's not an urgent, urgent, Cranston. If you get to it, I mean, you've got, I'm sure you're pretty meticulous um, uh, mind. I, just from talking to you, I get the feeling that you care. So, so when you get to it, hey, I, I appreciate everything. 
Um, yes, you are trusted allies. Exactly. Uh, so essentially, essentially, a lot of authors have an advanced reader team, like an ARC team, advanced reader copy crew that gets all the, the, the book in advance, right? And they get to read it. And then when it gets released, they post reviews right away and stuff like that. I don't have that because I'm a new baby, a baby, baby writer. So baby. Um, <laughs> so you guys, you guys are my ARC. You're my, you're my trusted allies. I think I might just call it the trusted ally club. Um, yeah, on Amazon, East of the Sun. Becker, hold on, let me pop it up again. There it is. Ta-da! You can search that and find it instantly because there are lots of East of the Suns and West of the Moons and things. Um, so there's me. And then, like I said, if you go down under read for free, if you want to buy it as an ebook so it doesn't just pop out of your library again after you read it, um, then that, that goes there. So... They, they put it in super fine print because Amazon is evil and actually just wants you to do Kindle Unlimited so they don't have to pay the author as much. I hate to say that, but it's absolutely true. So you have to look for the whole, I want to buy this book. I recently had to do that with another author's book and I was just like, oh. <laughs> oh, but Stephen King is so good. I, I, when I was a teenager, Stephen King was my favorite author. I still think he's like possibly the top American author. Yeah. Well, I wanted to be a hardback writer, but it turns out I have to get a different cover for that because it's bigger, right? It's a bigger book, bigger cover. So yeah. No, you are special. You are my trusted allies. Um, so trusted allies. So, okay. So yeah, mission number one, trusted allies is for those of you who actually like this genre and will read my book. And if you like it, great. Um, but tell me if there are problems. Mission two is that we need to get to 10 reviews or more. If I got to 20, I would be over the freaking moon, but I don't expect it. So like, I need to get to 10 reviews because what that does is that lets me advertise. A lot of advertise, like the email list sites like BookBub, they won't even look at you unless you've got at least 10 reviews. And they like 20 actually better. So yeah. Yeah, I'll have an author page soon. Like everything is like... Everything is like weird right now because I just started, right? So I haven't even like... Actually, I'm glad that Amazon linked the books together because uh, I would have had to do that manually normally. But they're identical, so apparently Amazon was like, oh, okay, I'll do this. Um, but my author site isn't, yeah. My author site, is, my author page is not live yet, or at least I was setting it up right before this stream, and they said, you were pending approval, so who knows. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on your desktop, that search button is hidden. Yeah. So yeah. Hello, Roger. My book is out. I'm super happy. So yeah, so that's what you guys, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't read it fast, just read it. If you, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. I'm not gonna be offended. It's not for everybody, right? Like no book is for everybody. Even the best books have people who just don't enjoy them for one reason or another, and I'm cool with that. I still love you even if you don't like my book. It's like Marika at one of the first, I think it was the first ReaperCon, first or second, it might have been the second ReaperCon where we had, um, it was when we had those, t the samples of MSP with the taped on labels. And she like came up to me very bashfully and was, and had to admit that she didn't really like the paint very much. Like she wanted to be honest with me. Right. But she was so scared that I was going to have a like flip out. Right. So I'm not going to flip out people. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. If you read the blurb and it sounds like it's a, it's a YA fantasy. Um, it's really, it's fairly clean. There is some violence, some implied violence, but I don't get graphic with it. Um, and you know, that's, I wanted to keep it kid friendly. Um, even though it is definitely a book written with a more adult tone in a lot of ways. So yeah, you know, I wrote it for me. <laughs> it's the kind of book that I love. So if you liked Neil Gaiman's Stardust, chances are this will vibe with you on some level. But we'll see. East of the Sun. A.E. Becker. So if you search East of the Sun Becker, you're going to get it. Otherwise, if you just search East of the Sun, every other book that's ever been published with that title is going to pop up before me because I'm, I have nothing. Nobody's bought it, right? So Except for Turgeon, who is my number one fan, I think. Uh, um, because it's on Kindle Unlimited. If you go down, Mac Attack, doo -doo -doo, hold on, hold on. So, okay, here's your screen. Well, at least here. So if you look, you can click on this right under the read for free and it will, should pop up the buy now. I don't know about desktop. You got to kind of look on desktop, but on phone under the read for free, there's usually a, a you know, want to buy for $4.99. And then if you click that, it drops this down. Um, and that's because Amazon would much rather have you buy it and read it on Kindle Unlimited because then they don't actually have to like give it to you. And also it, it gives them more money and me less. So 
Yes. So yeah, that's the trick. I wanted to make it like I wanted to put it in Kindle Unlimited and I decided I was originally going to price it at $2.99, but I'm like, if people can read it for free already, I'm just going to price it at $4.99 to make it look like professional because what I was uh, hearing from a lot of feedback and we will get to painting. Don't worry. I'm going to mix up some colors while we talk. Um, let's do, what do you guys want to do? Indigo or leather today? I don't feel like doing more gold at this point. I think I'll put off the gold a little bit. Leather, indigo, everybody wants different things. Maybe we'll just do indigo really quick, really quick, and then we'll do leather. Okay, but, um, do, 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 do. yay, there we go. But yeah, what I was reading was, um, I was seeing reviews of other books that I really liked, but whose authors had uh, priced them lower. And there were people coming in and saying, I almost didn't pick this book up because I thought that it was gonna be indie published crap because it was so low priced. And I didn't want that. So I was like, $4.99 is like the lowest like, respectable price, I think. <laughs> I want to be respectable, guys. <laughs> so yeah. That said, if you are totally broke and you cannot afford to buy my book, and you, you can totally read it on Kindle Unlimited if you're a, if you're a member. I, won't, I, I mean, I need those two, right? It's all cool. All support is cool. I'm just so excited. Like, I was, it was weird, right? When I hit the publish button last night... I wasn't excited. I was just so tired. I was just like, uh, I'm, I'm done. And then this morning, this morning, it wasn't really real. Like, I'm like, oh, they put my book up. And I was like, nah, do, do, do. and then at some point during breakfast, it like super, like it, like it became real. <laughs> and my brain lit up. Yes. Yes. It's out. It's out. Well, you know, Kernico, you know, yeah. Yeah. And one, it's very pretty. I mean, that when my, when I ordered my proof copy, it was very pretty. It made me happy. Yes. It's out there. And now, now it's just getting eyes. Now, now I don't expect this book to like be, I, I will be happy for whatever sales I get. Let's just put it that way. Especially because it's the first book in a series and I'm a new author. Don't expect no JK Rowling crap out here. <laughs> we're not going to go that way. Uh, we're not going to be Harry Potter, but, but, um, if enough people like it and I get good reviews, then I can, you know, advertise it a little bit and maybe get, I, I just want to build an audience. I want to see. My whole point in doing this is that I've been dreaming of being a writer since I was nine, guys. Nine years old. It's been 41 years. 41 years. And this book was started in 2011. So it's actually been 12 years since I started this book. I've been working on it that long. So more than anything else, all I want as a writer right now is I want to see if anybody else really loves this stuff the way I do. Like, that's my main concern. Like any, any review I get that's like at all like, oh, I really love this part or whatever. I'm all over the moon about that because that's what I want. I want more books like this out there. <sighs> so Self-actualization is terrifying, Big Chimpo. Like this is it, right? Like some people would be having a nervous breakdown at this point because they're, all their dreams would be on this. But the good thing about it is that I read, you know, I, when I want to do something, I read about it beforehand. And so for the past two years, I've been doing nothing but reading and listening to self-publishing stuff. And they're very pragmatic. They're like, you, you know, your book could tank. Your book is probably going to tank, right? So, but the more people read it and the more people like, like give it a review, the more chance it won't tank, right? The more chance it won't disappear into the great Amazon morass uh, out there. And then we put the second book out and, you know, with the third book and all that. Oh, good, Gibson. Good. Yes, this is a young adult book. Yes, Wasser. Yeah. Because, and it, it's young adult mostly, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty clean, as I mentioned earlier. It doesn't have any extreme violence. Um, or it has, it has violence, but it's not like graphic, right? Because uh, you have to have some risk out there, I think. But then um, the protagonists are teenagers, so... So it kind of gets, when you do that, when you make your protagonist that age, it kind of gets classed as young adult, no matter what you do. So I just embraced it because it's, I mean, it's certainly, it's readable by either. It's not a children's book at all. If you, if you, if you read the Redwall books, I think it's about on a class like that. And if you've read Neil Gaiman's Stardust, it's, it's around there too. So Stardust technically was released to be a, an adult book. And Redwall got, gets classed as YA. Like, people are like, this these days, Redwall would be in YA. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 you got to go into it with that, Big Chimpo. You got to, the healthiest attitude you can do when you're fulfilling your dreams 
and you don't know what's going to happen at all and you could totally tank you could totally fail all this stuff you've been building yourself up for for decades could totally not happen you could just be awful who knows <laughs> but i think the only healthy attitude is i'm just gonna see i'm just i just want to see is there anybody else out there that loves this sort of book like i do that's that's the healthiest attitude and it, and it does help. I mean, if you can, whatever your, whatever your dream is, whatever you're chasing, whether it be, you know, be a, a, a top level mini painter in the world or, or, you know, any other creative dream you've got, um, it helps if you can find books and podcasts where they give you the straight talk. Don't just read the stuff that wants to tell you, oh, you can be a bestseller and be independently wealthy in no time. You know, don't read that stuff. That They're lying. They just want to sell you a course. <laughs> That's all they want to do. Vampire and Demon Boyfriends, no. This is a fairy tale adventure based on Norwegian mythology. Or not mythology, sorry, Norwegian folklore. Yes, I hired an I hired an actual artist. Yeah, no, yeah. Since I put this book out myself, I'm independent. And I even I'm even if it does decently, if it gets to a certain level, I'll even create my own publishing company, which is what really good indie authors do. Um, but yes, I did I did the uh I commissioned the cover from a really good person. Um, her name is uh, is Raven with two V's, and she's in England, and she's super awesome. Uh, I love her. So, yes, yes, yes. So everything is getting... Today, I have a lot of work to do after this stream. So we're going to use some rich indigo, but we're going to tamp, tamp it down a little bit. The reason that we're going to um, add some of the black indigo into the rich indigo is that it's going to... Uh, muted a little, right? Because every other color on this model is muted. And remember the rule that I always tell you guys is if anything is muted, then everything needs to be at least, at least a little muted. So I don't want this super bright indigo. So I'm going to add a, a brush full or a little bit of this black indigo into it and see what I can do with it. Right, yeah. I mean, you can be, right? You, But publishing is a long game. And the healthy thing to, if you want to be a writer, if any of you want to write a book, the, the healthy thing is to understand that one book ain't going to make it. You got to commit to it. Just like with me and my painting and my Patreon and all this, you got to commit to it and more than one book is necessary. So like I'm planning on a series. There will be at least four to five books in this series. Even if it tanks, I'm going to finish the books. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so... Yay. Yeah, once I have a link to my author page or something, I'll give you that to add to the link spam, Quindy. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, I'm kind of really sad that Ed isn't here. He was always like so supportive of my writing. He was like, I'll buy five copies when it comes out. It was like he, yeah, because Ed also was a writer, right? He, he just wrote for fun. He decided he didn't want to really like publish but he like, he just enjoyed writing. And so he was always working on something and I was always working on something. And sometimes he'd, he'd, he'd ask me about my book and you know, how it was coming along and stuff. And he was always, I just, I miss him. I'm going to try not to cry now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to thin down my black indigo. Yes, I will. He Ed passed away, Wasser. Yeah, we lost our CEO um, right around Thanksgiving last year. Did you miss it? There was a big announcement on the Reaper front page, but if you weren't on stream and you weren't really uh, watching the Reaper website, you would have missed it. But yeah, Ed passed. Yeah. Huge loss to the miniatures community and all of us who knew and loved him. All right, so I've dimmed that down a little bit, but I still don't think it's quite... And you know what? You know what we can do? To see how bright this really is, I'm going to drop a little bit of white into it. And that's going to tell me if it's too much for this. I actually, Twisted Oma, I actually uh, did not dedicate this one to Ed. I dedicated it to my mom, who has believed in me for pretty much all of the time that I've been aspiring to write. If you if you believe in me for four decades, you pretty much get a dedication <laughs> at the front of my first book. And my brother's probably going to get the dedication on the second book for the same reason. Because even when, uh, even when my dad was like rampantly disapproving of the life path I was taking, my bro always, uh, he admired me and stood up for me. So he also was one of my beta readers, even though he like reads so few books because he doesn't have time. So yeah, eventually Ed will probably get a, get a, um, 
you know, get a dedication as well. But, but family, yeah, this case, in this case, mom and bro come first. There are lots of people I'd like to thank for their support over the years. So it's kind of cool. Like doing a dedication on the books is really cool. I always read dedications when I read, when I pick up a book, if there's dedication, I always read it. It gives me an idea of the kind of person um, that the author is. So yeah, thanks Turden. Yeah, that's the problem is that it, it happens so quickly with Ed, right? If it had been longer, I would have probably gone down to Texas to see him. But yeah, so. Hey, but this this all plays into it, guys. It's like, live your life while you've got it. You never know. You just never know. Pardon me while I get my Ed tears. Like, I'm probably smudging mascara all over the place. Oh, well, forgive me if I've smudged right there, mascara. <laughs> I love you, Kerniko. Kerniko, all the finger, all the freaking hand, like, no finger hearts, hand hearts. Hand hearts for the Kerniko. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But yes. Um, so yeah, the two, ta the two missions, two missions, two missions, my, my trusted allies, treasured allies. Um, hold on. Yes. Uh, remember, look through the book, tell me if there are problems, I will fix them. So then we can release it. We can start touting it wider. And then uh, second, second is, uh, I, I would love to have reviews if you like it, if you have the time. 10 reviews is our goal. 20 reviews would put me over the moon. Sweet. Aw, Shadow Raven. That's cute. I do, I don't, I don't consciously base, and I think this is true of a lot of writers, I don't consciously base my characters on living people, like on people I know. But when you write, your subconscious just grabs things from your memory and your experience and other books that you've read and movies you've watched, everything, right? So like one of my characters I realized belatedly is, is kind of comes from a cousin I know, right? Who's very, who's a very unique and idiosyncratic person. So um, it's iBooks. It's not up there yet. Pendrake, I don't, the, uh, okay, so this is the thing. This is the thing. I'm going to teach you guys about the publishing market because it's, because I have to, to answer the question. So Pendrake, I went with Kindle Unlimited, which means I'm exclusive to Amazon. The only way to get into KU is to be exclusive to Amazon. The reason I went into KU, even though it lets people read the book for free, is that it gets me a wider audience. So I want more people to discover my book. So I'm doing that. And if after three months, Kindle Unlimited doesn't do me right or doesn't seem to work for me very well and for my genre, it could be great. It could be not great. Um, maybe I'll leave it. I'll leave it for three months and see how it goes because three months is the period you sign up for. Then you can choose to either continue it or you can stop. But while it is in KU, you are not permitted to put it on any other ebook platform. And if it is, Amazon yanks you and does nasty things. Um, also, it's weird to get into Google and iBooks. Like... You kind of, they're not, Apple and Google aren't really, aren't really into the book market. Like they are, but they're not. And so they kind of make it really hard to get in there. So the best I can do is, is what I have to work on today is getting into Barnes and Noble. Um, cause the print book can go anywhere. The print book can go anywhere, but with iBooks, those, that's just ebook, you know? And so I can't put it there. I can't put it on Kobo. If I remove it from Amazon's Kindle Unlimited program, then I can put it on Kobo and, Am and iBooks and Google Play and anywhere else, right? Oh, KU, Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, hey, Arcafire. Is that a dragon? Is it a Pokemon? I can't tell, but you have a cool fiery thing and I love it. It's a cool fiery thing. So we're talking about books because I just published mine. Arc of Fire. But we're also talking about this guy that we're painting. Uh, so I was just looking at my highlight. This still seems really bright to me, guys. So I'm going to take my mixing brush and transfer more of my black indigo into here. When you add white to a color, you can really tell like whether it's going to stay bright on you. So I need this to gray out just a little bit more. That looks like might be favorable right there. That looks about like what I was looking for. So it's kind of a grayed out teal. It's pretty. I probably could have grabbed... Um, 
uh, the Twilight color from uh, Bones. It might be close to this. But yeah, so for right now, the ebook is only Kindle. Um, that may change if, uh, if it doesn't do well for me. That's the nice thing about being independent is I can choose. Pardon me. Must blow nose because talking about Ed makes me cry and then I get have to blow my nose. One second. Yeah. And hopefully my mascara isn't all over the place. But if it is, oh well, guys. I can buy it, honestly. All right. But yeah, Twilight Indigo um, um, could be, could have been Night Sky Indigo. Yeah, see, I'm almost mixed to Night Sky Indigo. My, Night Sky Indigo is a little bit more purple and darker. I think I'm going to use this, though. So there we go. Yep, yep. Yes, so it's just on Kindle right now. That may change. However, it will be on other book platforms. It will be orderable by bookstores and libraries. It will be orderable through Barnes & Noble. Um, but that takes time. Because you have to go through a real distributor, a real book printer and distributor for that. So I'm going through Ingram's. And that's why I have to deal with their forms later today. Um, and then it takes them, because they're traditional, it takes them forever to put the book into distribution. And then Barnes & Noble's catalog should show it. But the, for those who don't like supporting Amazon, which I get uh, totally, um, you know, that you can wait and it will be available. I just need to hustle on it. There's almost as much work when you publish, when you finally publish the book as there is when, you, when you're when you writing the book. So yeah, so I'm testing this highlight up here on his chest and I like that. It it went a little bit more blue as it as I added the black or the black indigo and the white, but it's uh, it's good. It's a good highlight. It shows up, but it's not too light. Um, I would I would say that orcish that orchid orcish purple. <laughs> if it was orcish purple, it'd be a bruisey purple, right? Um, I would call orchid a very reddish purple, a translucent reddish purple. If you look up here, I wouldn't it I wouldn't call it a violet per se. I mean, it, it's very reddish. Violet is, for me, is more blue, kind of like Chimera colors. Violet is very blue purple. Oh yeah, you can buy, you can buy the regular book if you want to then, Dark Father, of course. Yeah, I mean, the regular book is available through Amazon, I should point out. Hold on, hold on, there. So, so that's where it is, but I can only do trade paperback. Independent authors do not currently have the ability to do mass market paperback. So sadly, we cannot do a, a lower priced um, paperback. But it's big and it's pretty, so that's it. So if you search for me, yeah, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. And so, yes, and for anybody who's coming in new, like I said, my my goal is to have you guys, my trusted allies, um, when you read it, if you find any problems, please just let me know and I can fix them super fast. And then I can, I'd like to do that before I post it like to my Facebook and stuff, you know. Yeah, paper book, and it's a very pretty paper book. I mean, I have mine in the other room because I ordered a proof copy to make sure that it was okay. And then I had a lot of proof edits to do. So we're going to put this down. Now, because Black Indigo has no white in it, it is actually, um, it's actually not blending very well. And that's fine. We can we can do a little bit of wet blending with our, uh, with our Black Indigo if we want to. We can also just do a glaze of black indigo over the top to kind of make it blend in a little bit better like that. Yeah. Orchidish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we are totally a friendly bunch for sure. And I do not always talk about my book. I just, it's only because I just freaking published it. Because it is new today, it is being talked about. And then once I have it up on Barnes and Noble, I'll talk about it again. But my goal, I have, I have so many things to do today. I have to set up author, my author page. And I have to set up my author page on other places like Goodreads, because otherwise you can't really do much on Goodreads with my stuff. I want to I wanna make sure that I've got an author page over on, Goodread, on uh, Goodreads for sure. And then like BookBub and there's a few other places. So I have to do all that. And I have to fill out the Ingram's forms. And I have to contact my cover artist to ask her about doing a hardcover, um, hardcover cover for me. Because she has to format it differently to do that. 
Um, you know, I like the Chimera colors basic. I haven't, I don't have the, the scale 75 color theory Banshee, but I, with scale 75, I really prefer their, um, their tube paints to their bottle paints. Like I love their tube paints, but their bottle paints, I don't, I don't really own any, like, except for like one or two that I bought to try. Um, so for me, although Banshee paint set, he's got a good color sense, so it's going to be a good set. Oh, that set is tube? Oh, okay. Maybe I'll have to look that up then. Thanks for letting me know about that, Wasser. Actually, let me make a note. Scale 75. So it's a scale color artist Banshee set. So I use both of them now. And uh, I've done PDFs on both for my Patreon, actually. I think if you are really... Um, ah, tube and inks. Okay. Yeah, so if you if you like to use inks, then maybe the Banshee set is your choice. Uh, both are probably a lot of pure pigment colors. Although in my experience, the Scale Color Artist is a lot fewer pu pure pigment colors, unless the Banshee set is all pure pigment. In which case, you know what? He helped to design the uh, the Chimera colors and the Scale Color Artist, so they're probably really close. So then, the question is, do you like tube or do you like the bottle, right, format, right? Because those are going to be more fluid. They both are pretty strong. I would say eh, it's a toss-up. They're both really matte, too. Like, the finish is the same. Oh, thanks, Dogfather. Super, super hearts. Super, super hearts. Um, okay, so really quick, Wasser. Here's how I use... I always mix a little bit of Master Series into both of these lines. But so the question is, do you use kind of a well palette or a wet palette? If you use a wet palette, you might like the tube a little better because it's thicker and it's not going to turn to water as quickly. I, I find that on my wet palette, a lot of paints will go to water overnight um, and the Camira colors are no exception. So I find that maybe the tube is a little bit better on a wet palette. Yeah. Whereas in here, I could do either, right? With the well. That's the nice thing is I can thin them down to where I want them. But the other thing is, is that if you have problems with thinning your paint, like if you're not really accustomed to thinning it, then maybe the Chimera colors are actually better for you because they start out a little more liquid. Whereas with the tube paint, you really do, do need to like get them thinner or they're not going to come off of really thin brushes and stuff like that. So if, if you're used to like bottled, uh, mass bottled paint, that's, that's more fluid then maybe Chimera is where it's at for you. Otherwise, honestly, um, what you could do if you, if you weren't impatient, and I know I would totally just order one set or the other, but if you are a methodical person who doesn't want to make that money commitment without testing it, buy just one bottle or buy just one tube of the Scale Color Artist and see if you like it. I don't know if you can buy one bottle of the Chimera Colors, but if you can, buy one bottle of each, buy two different colors, buy your favorite color, you know, whatever. Um, and then try both and see what you like best. That, that way you're not like... Yeah, see, that way you're not committed. Like, I'll often do that with a new paint line is I will just buy one. Unless it's a line like these pure pigment colors, I was pretty sure I was going to want to try and play with those. Um, yeah, and the Scale Color Artist, I um, I did pick up the set because I was excited about tube paints because I was a 2D artist before I was a mini painter, and so I knew I could deal with them. Um, but yeah, I just pick up one of each and just go for it and play with them and see if the consistency bothers you with the tubes or if it bothers you with the chimeras, um, you know, and, and if you like the, the way they spread, if you like the way they mix, if you like the way that, that, that it works. Yeah. And that still gives you the, and that's cool. Cause if you have a, like kind of a methodical or strategic, strategic or analytical brain that lets you like analyze, right? Like, Oh, ooh, let's put these head to head and see how they are. Um, but if, if those uh, Alfonso, if those Banshee paints are uh, are pure pigment colors, I'm betting the only big difference is probably going to be the that the tube paints are thicker. So then you just have to ask yourself, you know, am I willing to have to thin these that extra bit to work with them? Um, or if the Alfonso set isn't a lot of pure pigments then you've got to kind of ask yourself, oh, well, will pure pigments, am I willing to mix a lot? Do I like to mix a lot? If you really love mixing, then pure pigment paints are really awesome. I'm just doing a little bit of highlight. I don't want my highlights to get too big here because I want to keep the dark, because this is the darkest, this and the brown down here are the darkest colors and the brown is going to come up with some highlights. 
So I need to still keep that dark enough for it to read and be my dark color here on the model. Um, Jay Sprinkle, uh, if you want to, I have, wait, 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 I have an email. You can pop it in, probably at my business email. One second and I will put it up on screen. So I have my own website, I have an author website. And so all you need to do is email me at, and that, that's my business, business writerly, writerly business email. So it's Anne at aebeckerwrites.com. And aebeckerwrites.com is my website. Right now the sale button on there doesn't work. That's another thing I have to do today. <laughs> but yeah, or you can just leave a review. I mean, anything, anything three stars or more, just leave a review. But if, yeah, if you, if you have feedback about, hey, Anne, you need to fix this, <laughs> then email me, yes. Or you can just come on stream and probably tell me. But email is the best um, way to find me. So you want to mix your layers and not go and buy a few paints for each color. All right, then, yeah, then I would say, I mean, Alfonso's going to, Banshee said is going to let you do that, right? Because that's his whole MO is mixing. Mixing in color and saturated color. And so... Either set is going to do it. So yeah, I say buy one of each, test for consistency, see which one you like better and rock that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yay. Thanks, everybody. You are all my favorite people. This is why you, you get to know before anybody else. I'm not even telling my Patreon yet. Because, um, I mean, I hang out with you guys every day. And a lot of you are patrons anyway. But I wanted to start with the smallest group of people so that we would have some time to fix things before I, I tell everybody else. So. I'm just gonna put a little bit of highlight down here. I need a little bit of highlight down here because there will be some reflected light, but at the same time, that's so under him that you're not going to get a lot of highlight, just a little bit. This leg is forward, so you're going to get it on the knee here. But down here, you need just a little bit. You're just going to tell Quindy. <laughs> yes, Quindy could totally uh, Discord me. And uh, that's also, if you're on Discord, you probably can just message me. Although... Yeah, that's less, that's more problematic. If you're on my Discord, it's totally easy. I have a writing channel on my Discord. So if you, yeah, if you're a patron and you're on my Discord, you could pop it in the writing channel. Just go ahead and I'll, I'll be very grateful. Yes, goal number one is to make sure the book is, it doesn't have any glaring errors that I've missed because, you know, when you've read the book as many times as I have at this point, you miss stuff. All right, so let's get this sleeve is a little wonky. It's got the, the wrinkles are kind of wonky. I think I'm gonna have to wet blend it to get it to be smooth. His sleeve is definitely bunching up, but it's, it's very lumpy down here and that makes it difficult to make the um, highlights look smooth. They tend to like look lumpy no matter what I do, which is a shame, but that's a little better, yeah. Um, honestly, I do a lot of reading on my phone on the Kindle app, but, um, my, uh, David has, um, uh, a fire tablet and I think he likes to read on that, but it's almost done. Wasser, we need to do gold. Like you can see there's some gold here. That's really flat. Cause we haven't done the shiny gold yet. So I've got to do the shiny gold. Um, and I've got to do, uh, the leather down here. I did the reddish leather, but I didn't do the dark leather. On the, sh on the sheath here and on the boots and then the wood on the cane needs to be done. Um, otherwise the hair doesn't have highlights yet. I mean, it looks good because it's all lined and there's, and lots of it are, is done. Um, but the hair isn't done. Some of the gold isn't done. The leather down here isn't done and the indigo is, is getting done now. So I actually was thinking about instead of taking the gemstones, um, uh, 
black like I was thinking. I think I might make these indigo guys because I like the, the spots of indigo on here. I really like how this color is playing with everything. Um, so I think I might pop these gemstones to be indigo. Yeah, I was I was going to do them just like Onyx Big Chimpo because I didn't want to put too many colors on him, right? Because there was a real risk there. But then I think. <laughs> yeah, your iPad, right? Yep. Yeah, I have a Kindle Paperwhite as well. I do a lot of reading on the Paperwhite. But honestly, sometimes I prefer my phone. Like, I kind of think maybe I would prefer a tablet with the Kindle app on it. Um, because the the Paperwhite is just so clunky. Like, there's some things I like about it. I like that it isn't a screen that's going to, like, keep me awake. Like, I like that it... it seem it feels like paper it seems like paper and it doesn't illuminate more than it needs to so it's not going to keep you awake well into the night with the blue light thing so it doesn't disrupt my sleep but it also takes a while to turn pages sometimes it's a little bit i given i have an older paper white so an older device multiple times with your kindle fire it depends wasser um some minis we're very much just starting and discovering as we go along like the mini i just started that will be on on thursday this lady i knew i wanted to make her with a very red brown kind of henna hair and golden skin tone so we are definitely kind of discovery painting her where we are just going to paint as we go along and choose colors as we go along based on what we started with but i do the color wheel um to help you with that so for this guy, he's definitely, ah, he's definitely a color wheel special. And I just dropped everything on the floor. Pardon me while I, while I, like, I do need my painting glasses or I'm kind of not painting anymore. There we go. So, uh, this guy is, actually, he's the same color scheme as our knoll. Here, let me get the knoll. So a while back, last year, we painted Mr. Knoll. So even though these are not the exact same colors, these are very similar colors. So in, instead of the yellow green olive, the sickly yellow green olive, we've got the meadow green, which is still a yellow green. It's still a muted yellow green, right? You just drop, drop the phone on your face. <laughs> yep. Um, and then uh, the red orange here, similar to the red orange up here, except this is a little more orange. And then the indigo here, one of the, the rich indigo that I'm using to highlight um, the jacket here is the same color as the indigo on the pants here. So what this is, is it's not a primary or secondary triad, it's a tertiary triad. So if you look at your color wheel, the back of it specifically, you have these triangles. And the big triangle is the triadic triangle. So normally you, you look at red, yellow, blue, or green, orange, purple. But you also can look between at these like red oranges and yellow greens. So if you line up your points of your triangles with, say, uh, the yellow green for his coat, you see that the other triad color is red orange, which is his beard. And then the other one is blue violet, which is that indigo that we're working on right now. So that is a secondary triad. The other second or the other tertiary triad, sorry, it's a tertiary triad. The other tertiary triad is... And maybe we'll do a mini with this. I don't think we've done one. Maybe we'll do it with um, Kathy Wapple. Is red, violet, yellow, orange, and teal. Blue, green. So we could totally do that with Kathy. I have used Tetrads before, uh, Kodiak. I, I don't like them as much. Um, it's less instinctual for me to go there. If I set out to use one, I have done the long Tetrad before, I think, where I've done kind of that kind of thing. But let me go and pop one over here. Let's see here. Let's... I'd say I've probably done a red, purple, yellow, green. Like, I've probably done that. But I haven't done with tertiaries, I don't think. So, but I tend to use, I tend to use the long Tetrad, not the square. Because I don't like to end up with um, with tertiary colors next to my primary and secondary colors. Yeah, this is really useful. This is really useful, the back of your color wheel. And this is a tiny color wheel. It's uh, You can buy it pretty much any art store or uh, Amazon, and it's really cheap. It's just a few bucks. Oh, 
the old one to my cat fanboy. <laughs> oh, funny. I love your cat fanboy. He he might be. I'm sorry, Turgeon. I mean, okay. Cat fanboy is my biggest painting fan. And and Turgeon is probably my fa my biggest writing fan. But other people can fight him for that title. Now that everybody can read the book. Oh, Egret. Egret has made you drop the phone. That's funny. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then they scare because you drop the phone on them. It's like, it's like Kiki, like, come on, Kiki, get out of the way. And then you trip on her and step on her paw. And then you have to apologize for her, even though she was to her, even though you're in, she was in the way. Yeah. I'm glad that helps Kodiak. Yeah. I just like to stick to like, and I'm, it's not like I don't like kind of push my colors. Like when I do use a primary or secondary color, I do tend to like slide them. So like I might pick a blue, but then I might highlight it with a little teal, right? So my highlights and shadows might kind of push my primaries and secondaries one way or another. Um, but starting out with my basic idea of color scheme, I tend to use the long tetrad because I want just, just only um, the kind of the basic primary and secondary. I usually don't want to mix in splits. So yes, Cap my fanboy has no Amazon account to buy, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing, Kerniko. You don't need, I mean, if Kiki, if Kiki had an account, she would be like buying even more bully sticks. So we already joke that like she, like David's last raise is just not existent because uh, Kiki's bully stick habit has absorbed all of it. Oh, the I'm your biggest fan. Yeah. Okay. That's true. That's true. Don't be that kind of biggest fan, please. That's a brilliant book, by the way, Misery. But, uh, and Stephen King is the one who to have written Misery because he's had some scary fan experiences. People get irrational. I'm just like, come on, people. We're just people. Like, famous people are just people. They're just people that are really, really skilled or really talented or really, you know, like got lucky or, you know, or all of the above it usually takes all of the above skill, talent, and luck and hard work. People who are willing to work. And that is not a reason to crash your car into their car to meet them. Like seriously, that happened to Stephen King. I don't know if you guys knew that. Like at, at a convention, at a signing where he signed until his fingers were raw to make sure that he could get all of his fans taken care of. As he was leaving, fans who didn't make it to the signing crashed their car into his so that they could meet him. Like, serious, for serious, this happened. It's, it's scary. Like, it's just scary. Yeah, I've been reading, I, I've been reading him since I was a kid, Wasser. I started, my dad had Firestarter and, uh, oh, I don't remember which other one he had. But he had Firestarter and I read it when I was like 10, 11, because I was always grabbing my dad's books at that age and my mom's. Ah, I can't fan, cat fanboy is the reason you have a Kindle cover. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One touch ordering. <laughs> I don't know, Kernico. I don't know if it happened. I think it happened actually after Misery though, because he was big when, when Misery is coming out, but he's immense now. So I'm not sure when the timeline was. It was actually in a writing book, um, that it was just like, uh, kind of like an anecdote that, that his, uh, his editor was telling. Forty-seven months. Wow, D. Clearman. Wow. And then I have to start singing quadruple subversary, quadruple subversary, quadruple subversary. <laughs> at least it fits. It's like galloping horses at that point. Yeah, that's the thing. I like it on vacations and everything. Because I used to have to bring like eight or nine books on vacations. I do not desire fame. Like, it would be cool to have people like my books. That's pretty much where I'm at. Enough of them so that I could actually not feel like I'm like a starving artist. Like, that would be great. That would be great. Because right now, right now, I'm a starving artist. It's a good thing that I have a very, uh, very considerate, very, very handsome, very, uh, very has a good job husband <laughs> i mean i could make it without david 
But it would be tight. It would be tight, folks. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that, Karniko. Ah, Dogfather, thank you. Yeah, I actually want to pick that pick up that Stephen King book too. Because fairy tales. Every once in a while, Stephen King like brings out his like, I really want to be a fantasy writer uh kind of self, and I uh I like that. Like even though it's of course with him it's always dark fantasy. It's funny that I liked him so much when I was a kid because now I've like totally I don't read horror at all. It's just not my genre at all. But he's just yeah, I don't know. Something about his writing. I really like his writing, so there we go. All right, so we've got a really nice sleeve there. That's looking good. And it still reads really dark. That's what we want. We want to make sure that we get that pop of indigo color, but we still want it to read dark so that we've got a nice array of lights and darks across this figure. Because that's what we're doing here is our gold and our cream and our white here, our, our gray, are lighter. And then we've got our mid is the green and the orange. And then we've got our dark, which is the leather and the indigo. Yeah, I read it when I was a kid, Agent Marvel, but I can't handle it now. I can't handle it now. I just don't like violence. My favorite King book is um, The Wind Through the Keyhole, which is the kind of like little addendum book to Dark Tower. I read that book and I was like, this is the book that I wanted to write. Like, this is like, if I want, there are times when I write, when I read Stephen King and I'm just like, wow, that nailed it. That is pretty much a perfect book for my vibe. Because he lets himself go all like story retelling mode in there and I really love it. But uh, yeah, as far as his older stuff, I would say, oh boy. There are so many. I mean, I always love The Shining. The Shining is the classic, right? Yeah, yeah. Dark Tower got very, me very meta. No, his drug era was, um, was that was when he wrote Cujo and uh, the Tommyknockers. He talks about it in On Writing. If you read his book about writing, which if you like Stephen King, read On Writing, even if you are not a writer. You can skip the writing craft stuff and just read the parts that are autobiography and it's fascinating. Oh yeah. Yeah, Dark Tower would be hard for for TV, yeah. Any well, any big sweeping epic story like that is difficult to do, right? Alright, I think I've got everything. Oh, this part of the sleeve. I didn't get this side. You can see how dark it started out, and then we now we've got some um, some highlights. This went up a little bit too high on the upper part, so I'll probably knock that down in a minute. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I love the coat cuffs too. They turned out really well. Yeah, Misery is a wonderful book. I love The Shining as a kid, so it it is still even though I'm not wasn't a fan of the ending as much. Um I think that it is a, a very good book. <clears throat> See, these are a lot of little folds, so it's really hard to do blending in here. Um, and we still need enough dark to stick to um, convey that, you know, this is a darker color of cloth. That's a little better. I think it is butts, but... Um, I think it is possible, but your like continuity becomes a real problem. Like even as the writer, um, a lot of writers will say, you know, they they keep spreadsheets. They have to keep spreadsheets, and it's often with a writer that's very prolific, but that um, just doesn't have the time, right? Because you're writing, you don't have a lot of time to like catalog all this stuff. Like uh, if you read Girl Genius, Phil Foglio and and Kaya uh, or Kaja, I don't know how she says it. But she, like, they depend on their fan wiki um, to, like, catch stuff. And George R. R. Martin, same thing. Depends on his fan. He has, a, he has a hardcore fan who has been essentially cataloging his stuff and indexing it since he started, pretty much. And he depends on that from time to time to double-check details. 
So, yeah. Well, late middle is a slog. Late middle is a slog. And the problem is, okay, so the problem is that every story has a structure, right? Like, even if it's just like, even if you're a discovery writer or an intuitive writer, your story still has a structure. You know, your character's starting out here, a thing happens, the character starts, you know, on the trail. There's like a midpoint where things get kind of tipsy. You know, there's like, there's more, more trouble and the bad guys are coming closer and closer, right? And then you have the big confrontation and then, you know. Um, so you've got that structure, but when you are writing a series, not only does every book have to have that structure, but the series has that structure. So that the later books where you've got the rising action can feel like really odd because you can get lost in the sauce there. Because you, you have to somehow still manage to have that beginning, rise, you know, comfort, you know, something and some sort of conclusion. But it can't be the big battle because you're not there yet. So yeah, I feel like middle books, that's why middle books and late middle books in series tend to feel sloggy. Is because that's a real challenge when you're writing. It's a big challenge. Uh, go to, gr if you want to like lose days of your life, Big Chimpo, you should look up Girl Genius. It's an online comic. They also have books. They kickstart their books. I think they independently publish and kickstart their books. But Girl Genius is like one of the, is a Hugo winning comic. It is actually one of the longest running web comics, I think. Um, it's, it's, it will take you forever, but it, it's good. <laughs> um, Mad Science Europe. Mad Science and Magic in Europe. It's, it's crazy talk. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Yeah, and then every scene has microstructure. But you know, a lot of us don't really, like, we internalize that, but the, every scene is, yeah, it's different. Yeah, so if you like what, yeah, if you like web comics and you and you like Phil's art and Kaja's, like, Kaja, yeah, yeah, go. Go read Girl Genius and we'll see you in May. <laughs> because it'll suck you in and you'll just keep reading and you're like, isn't this over yet? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, catch up, catch up. I, I read it every day. Like I, I, I binged it when I first discovered it. And I think I binged it for like a couple weeks. And then every day since then, for years now, I've been, every time they post, I check my webcomics Monday, Wednesday, Friday without fail. She's on a secondary story right now that I really am actually loving. Because they, uh, they're at a point of the story where they actually had to go and check their continuity to make sure that going forward, they were not, you know, not losing their continuity. So when they have those moments, they typically put out secondary stories set in the world. But I actually love this secondary story, so. Hmm, okay. What are those about? Give me a sentence of what those are about. The rule on us. What is, obviously, kill six billion demons sounds pretty straightforward, huh? Now I have to make a note of that. One second. Oh, Mike Stackpole. Yep, yep. Yep, yeah. Yeah, when I, well, and it's also, like, how young we were. Like, when we started reading Stackpole, he was great. And then as you get older, you're, like, see the weaknesses. Uh, kill six billion demons. And unsounded. What's unsounded about? Can you tell me, Hieronymus? Just real quick. I don't know if it's the kind of thing I'd like or not. I'm trying to think if there's an author I used to love and don't anymore. I think Piers Anthony, maybe. Again, it's kind of dated. Where, you know, I liked his books when I was a kid, but as I got older, I just didn't really... Yeah, Shadow Raven, I feel that on this on the flaws. Cool. Yeah, the other ones I read is one called Wildlife, uh, W-I-L-D-E, wildlifecomic.com. That's um, written by a uh, 
a lady um, in Oklahoma, uh, and I caught it. I For some reason, I started reading it, like, right when she started it, because I had tried her last comic. She's gotten to be a really good artist, and the stories are fun. It's about a guy who rents a haunted house off of Craigslist, and that's just, like, that just begins everything. Yeah, Piers Anthony, yeah. Yeah, I tr it's, I'm weird on the writer thing, on the, because I think it's because, like, having met some authors, I know they're just people. Everybody's going to have their flaw flaws and faults. I try not to pay too much attention to, like, the author behind the curtain, unless I actually meet them and have a bad experience with them. Um, otherwise, I, like, I suspect there are many authors I wouldn't buy from, and I'm like, not every author could be a, like, paragon of humanity. Um, I try. <laughs> But yeah, as, as it was, as like, it's just his writing and his characterizations that I fell out of love with, but. But I'm trying to think, I've got my, my favorites, my favorites bookshelf behind me. All the big ones and Gunslinger is on it. I don't have any other Stephen Kings on it in print. I will say that one of my favorite writers these days is William Gibson. I, the man has only gotten better, in my opinion. I love his new stuff. All right, so I mixed the highest highlight, but I'm not going to put it very many places. Just tiny spots wherever the light is really shining. You hate Pat Roberts? Is it because the fiction is too heavy, Wasser? Because I could, I could see that. Yeah, that's too bad. Oh, that's too bad, Carnico. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, people are people, and sometimes they're dumb. Like, <laughs> I hate to say that. Yeah. Is he doing everything other than writing? That happens. It is actually something that Neil, Neil Gaiman has talked about it, too. But it's the great irony of when you become a, a really well-known author that if you don't watch it, you will get distracted by everything but writing, right? Because, and think about it, too. Think about it, yeah. Although Martin has turned that around now, Wasser. Um, like, I think Game of Thrones ending, like the TV series ending, was a relief to him, and uh, he got back on, back onto the writing track. But he's a super slow writer. And that's another thing to realize, is some of these guys are really slow. And I'm a fairly slow writer, but I'm speeding up now compared to what I used to be. But yeah, it's hard. It's a battle. It's like with, with Germ, it's very much what, think about it for a second. I'm not going to make excuses for the man. If you don't like him because he takes forever to write, that's fair. Um, but it took him forever to get to where people actually read and loved his stuff. Like years and years and years he was writing and nobody cared. And then Game of Thrones actually hit and hit super big. So for ages, he'd been wanting this, right? And so when it happened, he got super sucked into it. Um, and I think that's also, like, if you really do want fame, I think that's the danger, is that if you get it, you may suddenly find that you are not writing. And so I think that then you look at somebody like Nora Roberts, right? J.D. Robb who writes at least four books a year. And she doesn't do conventions. She doesn't do media. She doesn't go on TV. She doesn't, she doesn't do any of this stuff because what she wants to do with her life is write books. And that's what she does. So there's two op opposites, right? There's two opposites there. I don't know if he will, Wasser. I don't know. I have faith in Gurm. He's, he, I know him personally, by the way. Um, he's a nice guy. But he is very slow. He is very slow. Although you should be aware that he also is, a, like, people say that to him and it really upsets him. <laughs> like, he's trying. He is. But he's also really slow. Just a intricate writer. And some people are. And when you are a slow writer and that's your process, it's, uh, it's what you are. Like, could you speed up a little? Probably, maybe, but you're never going to be a fast writer. Speaking from the writer chair. But yeah, 
But it's fair. It's fair. He may never, who knows, maybe he won't finish it. I hope he will. I, I root for him. Because I really like, uh, I really like Gurm and his wife and his, uh, his goddaughter. I'm friends with all of them. Um, so, you know, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him. But it's fair if, uh, if you just are kind of disenchanted. That is absolutely fair. All right, now I'm going to do the gems. Let's get the gems. Let's get Indigo going. <laughs> She's just, like, written so many books, Kerniko. Yeah. Well, and it depends. Like, okay, so some of writing is actually, like, if you're, if you're a writer like George R. R. Martin, your writing process is really slow because you've got all of these different characters, all of these different plot lines, and you have to weave them together and make sure everything comes out the other side, and it has to be witty, and it has to be, you know, like good enough to hold the reader's attention and it has to have pacing and yeah, it's crazy. And then you have writers who are just like, they know the story they want to write. They've written it a thousand times because every, let's face it, every romance book is, you know, just like has a lot of the same elements, the same tropes. And they just write that and they write it well and their fans love it. Like, and they write it fast, but it's different. It, writers are different. Just like everybody else is different, right? Uh, bright violet, red violet. So, okay, wait a minute. Violet meaning purple? Because violet as a pigment, usually when you see it, it's going to be darker. Do I have my violet down here? Um, violet is usually uh, kind of a, a bluer. Oh, there we go. Here. So when you see violet, here, let's I'll compare these. I'm going to grab the computer colors because I've just got them here and it makes it very, very obvious what the difference is. So we've got... Um, Violet and purple. You can see the difference, right? This is bluer and this is redder. Um, so, and you can kind of see here where this is a very red and this is very blue. So when you use violet in place of purple, I get confused because I'm not sure what you want. Warmer. So, okay. So you want a reddish purple. Um, if you want a really deep, dark reddish purple, but that's still really saturated and rich, then Monarch Purple is probably your, uh, hold on, let me grab it. Monarch's the one I would pick. It is uh, a deep dark purple, but you can see it's redder than this blue violet. And uh, when you put it on a palette, yeah, I've got them right here, Wasser. I like to mix some um, Chimera into my MSP. MSP adds adhesion and a little bit better layerability because the a lot of the other a lot of those paints are built for coverage. So this is the color of monarch purple. Hold on, I'll get it. So this is monarch. I'm gonna spread it out with some water so you can see it. That's that color. Is that what you're looking for? Or something even redder, Agent Marble? Yeah, violet red also would work. Yeah, I just root for writers to finish their series. Um, and then if you want something even redder, then I'd say that Orchid is your is your baby. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, that's nine two three nine. Yeah, nine two three nine monarch purple. That's one of my all time faves. I use it a lot for uh, shadows if I want purple shadows with a lot of punch to them. Otherwise, Orchid is your next step up. And that is a really red, really, really red. Okay, cool. Now I gotta put my chimeras back so that they don't get lost. Get in there. It was, I love, the, I do love this, this, this color. So, but yeah, different paint lines. Uh, the reason I pick up like scale color artist and, uh, um, Chimera is that they have access to pigments that I didn't have access to when I was making Master Series paints. So it's a nice way to switch it up for me. Yeah, Necromancer, Necromancer Purple is really red. It's more like Orchid. Um, I have it here somewhere, I think. But I don't know where I stuffed it. I might have taken it out of my rotation because it was so close to other colors. Yeah, I think I took it out of my rotation. It's out, not in my favored drawer anymore. Uh, 
Okay, okay, okay. So we got that. And we've got little bits of the highlight on there. And now I need gemstones. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to straight rich indigo with this, actually, I think, because I want punch. And these gems are small. So if I try to do a muted uh, indigo on those gems, they pro probably won't show up. So I'm going to actually pop a bit of my rich indigo in here and start with that. But you can see now how much I muted it out. Like, this is much brighter, and this is very gray right here. So, yeah, yeah, all good. But yeah, I'm trying to think of who else. Some of my favorite authors aren't writing anymore. Or haven't written in ages. Right now, I just started a really... I started a book. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it. Um, I picked it up because it was on a BookBub thing and it looked interesting. It's about teenage witches. Modern day, like urban fantasy. But it's written really... Like, the prose is beautiful, but it's super purple. Like, really... And I don't know if I'm going to get through it entirely. We'll see. If I like it, I'll, I'll give you guys a... I'll tell you what it is. But it's uh, it's an LBGBQ, yeah, you know what I mean. I always get my letters wrong. It is very, very beautifully written, but yeah, probably not for everybody. Because sometimes you just want a book that you can just charge through, and this one is the one I actually have to pay attention to the language in. And sometimes I feel like that's cool, and sometimes I feel like it's not. So it depends on my mood. Alrighty. So I made a a plus white, and I just and I have my rich indigo. So my plus white is what I'm going to put down first on this big gem, and I'm just going to hit the facets, and I'm going to go over with some indigo because the indigo is very transparent. So in order for it to show up, I want it to get, I want to get uh, some uh, underpainting down first. So so I want to hit all the edges with this white indigo mixture. I think Keekster is sleeping in the other room. And then we want to get these lines that go down, the facets, right? You want to get all of these with a little bit so that you can see those. Faceted gems are weird because often you're, uh, it's not like round, round gems are easier, like oval gems, like this guy up here, much easier to do. And actually, let's just go in and put in a little bit of a highlight down at the bottom of it. Then we'll put our indigo over the top. And we're going to come back to this guy, but I think I want a little bit of a highlight down here. Thanks. Yeah, the belt could use a little bit more, but we'll see. Glad you like it. So a little bit, a little bit strong there. That that could be a little bit too too strong. So I'm gonna grab actually some of my indigo, the more muted indigo that I used on the sleeves. I painted a little bit over part of this. Kind of take it down a little. And I want more dark up there. Oh, <laughs> meeting time. 
Thank you, Crowley. Thank you so much. And then I want to maybe hit, got to figure out where my highest highlight's going to be. I think it's probably going to be on this edge up here. But different facets are usually different colors. I'm going to keep some of them pretty dark this time. I need to figure out my, my light's really coming top down, so. I just put a little bit of color here and there. I'm going to grab white. I need to do a highlight. Oh. See, I gotta get all my author book pages up and then I have to do my Ingram Spark like forms and I have to fix the button on my website to give it a real link to go to and I have to do so many things guys and then then I have to take a day off and then start working on book two again so much to do so much to do yeah super happy to finally have a book out there so now it's it's time to write the second book to be as awesome Let's see here. I want to thin this a bit. I've already got some water in it. I think I'm just going to try this. Let's see. It's probably a three to one with the white. Like so. So pretty, pretty fluid. You want it fluid enough so that you're going to be able to do little tiny lines and dots with it. We did not get to the leather at all on this guy, but I really like how the indigo is looking. So. David and I are going out to eat tonight to celebrate me at being a published author. So I'm just going to kind of pick up a highlight like right up there on that end. Maybe a bit along the top. Like so. And I might want a little bit, not quite pure white, but a, an indigo white to hit some of the edges with. Usually if you're doing gemstones or crystals and they're faceted, you do want a white or an off-white to trace all those facets. Oh, thanks, Carrie Michael. Yay! Yes, yeah, after this many years, you know, when you've worked towards something for decades, you're just like, okay, this deserves going out to a really nice dinner and like taking a day off and then back to work. I do have to make myself take the day off because part of me will just like keep working, but I have to like treasure, I have to learn to treasure things like this. This only happens once. You publish your first book only once. We'll never be like this again. It's like when you're a beginning painter, like enjoy the process. It will never be like this again. Two years you'll look back on what you were doing and be like, wow. I'm gonna do a bigger highlight on the top here. <laughs> oh yeah, dessert, I know. I'm on, I'm on Noom right now, so I'm trying to eat uh, eat less but I'm like you know might be a treat day might be a treat day today celebratory treat day so a little bit more highlight on top and I need to clean up that line on the top there with faceted things you want to be pretty precise you guys remember um, let me grab rock troll there we'll fix that let me zoom out real quick and let me grab rock troll because he had a lot of crystals too so faceted gemstones you do just like you do big crystals, except on big crystals, you have a lot more room, right? So these really big guys here, I was able to do a lot more um, than with that little faceted gem. But 
what I did with these guys on the sides is very close to what I did on his faceted gem. So it's the same kind of thing. And this is a model we actually painted on Reaper on this pro, on the pro tip stream a couple of years ago now, I want to say maybe a few maybe back in 2020, I think. Um, but we did a couple streams on the crystals. So if you want to look up Mr. Rock Troll, you can uh, find out how we painted him. I still, he's one of my faves. David was just looking at him the other day and was like, I really like this model. I'm like, you hated it when I first did it. He has a bone. It's a bone. Yeah, Rock Troll is, it's a really, I really like the, like the, um, the bone. It's a bone. Uh, he's made it into a flask. It's got a stopper on the top. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, so yeah, troll. You can go back, and thanks to Reaper, making this stuff all available for free as VODs forever and ever, you can go back and watch it if you missed it. It's fair, it's fair, Wasser. It wasn't immediately, immediately uh, apparent what it was. All right, I hope I've got a little speck of white on the bottom of them. I've touched that up. All right, yeah, so there we go. Gonna do just a couple more little touch-ups down here. But yeah. And then I need to do my little highlight up at the top of that gem. Faceted gems are like more of a pain in the butt, but also more fun in a lot of ways once you uh, get past the scary of it. Good, good, good. This troll rocks first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, YouTube is a good discovery tool sometimes. I love YouTube. I will admit it. I like doing videos for it, even though I haven't had a lot of time recently, but, and I like, I like watching things on it. I follow a lot of different things. It's just so useful. Okay. And then with a little bit of a highlight up here, on top of that gem. And I need to make more of a highlight down below and I need to put some dark in there. Oh, the, papa, the puppy is awake. I uh, hear her chewing on her, her bully stick and dropping it on the floor. There. And you do, once I do the gold rim around there, it'll be a little bit more contained. But yeah, thank you all you guys for your support on my my big step in my new, new co-direction. Now I really am a writer artist. I could put that, I could put that on my, on my IRS tax return. <laughs> When I, when I first put, uh, so there we go now. See, bring in a little bit more highlight at the bottom there, and now we have more of a gemstone on the on the uh, top there. But you need to put that dark background against their white dot for that gem to look real, if it's a rounded or oval gem. Um, but yeah, yeah. The double threat, yep. Well, I'm still not, I don't know, my triple threat? I don't remember her. Technically, I'm a painter. I'm not a sculptor. Like Derek Schubert is a, is a triple threat. Actually, he's a quadruple threat because he's a singer, actor, singer, actor, sculptor, painter. So I still can't match Derek. I'm, I'm still not, still not, I'm no Derek Schubert. <laughs> oh. Although I can sing, so maybe I've got that, but I just seldom do so. And certainly not in public. Yes, painter writer MC, that's true. That's true. Although Derek MC'd for me last year, so he's also stolen that. You know, that Derek Schubert. Can't take your eyes off that guy. <laughs> yeah, dog trainer. Sometimes not so good of a dog trainer. Oh, Kiki. She's a wreck. <laughs> she could be worse. She could be worse. She's just a puppy. I keep saying she's just a puppy. She's just a pain. <laughs> 
I have all sorts. I have all sorts of worlds to write. I have to put dogs in there somewhere. I don't like to think of myself as a dog breeder, even though I do have litters. But I like, I do it only for the for the breed. Like I only do it as part of the gene pool expansion. It's nothing I want to be. Um, it's not like, I, I do it for different reasons, I guess. But I'm I'm definitely a dog person, though. Yes. Definitely dogly. All right, what have we done? Look at. So since I dimmed that down just a little, it's still brighter, so the gem still shows up, but it works well with the um, the dark indigo and still is a little bit different, but, but I can see clearly like my eye connects these two. So that's great. So all I need to do is bring that gold rim around that gem and it'll really pop then. Um, so we need to do more gold. We did our feather, our, our cap, our green still needs a little bit of work, I wanna say, but not a lot. Um, so next time I think maybe leather and cane. Oh, I've also got gems on the sleeves. Curses. Curses, gems on the sleeves. Curses. Hmm. What do we got? Five after, huh? <laughs> yeah, see, that's the problem, Pendrake. You had to explain. <laughs> yes, I mean, I would like to do a painting book, but that's a lot of work. Even more, well, okay, as much work. Different kinds of work. Right, because it's you're still writing a book. You don't have to like worry about plotting it, but you do have to worry about organizing your lessons, and then you also have to do all the tutorials. Yeah, I've been thinking lately about painting book, maybe, but I I wouldn't. I could use, I could, I could base a lot off of what I've done for the Patreon, but I would want to rewrite and expand and, and do different examples maybe for a lot of it, you know? If I did a painting book. One of these days I'll probably do one. Everybody else seems to be doing them, right? I, I think I could probably convince Dave to carry it on the Reaper store if I did it. But it would be an awful lot of work. It would be something that, like, if I did the painting book, it would have to be something that, like, I did, like, a chapter every once in a while until it was done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, if I do a painting book, that's the one I dedicate to Ed. That's actually a great on-the-nose, Pendrake. That's, that's a great idea. But yeah, yeah, I would like to. I mean, I would like to consolidate all my stuff. Because I, I was thinking about the Patreon the other day after I put out the cool reds and, you know, there's just there's just so much. There's so much, like, if you put all my PDFs together, it probably would be a book at this point. But then there'd be, like, holes, right? Like, there's just some stuff that you have to do. I feel like you really want to do on video. And there's also a lot of really wonderful painting books out there right now. So I'm like, is my book really necessary? I mean, I could definitely speak to some parts of it that are different. I have a different way of going about things. Everybody does. But yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm, I'm definitely focused on the fiction. But I do enjoy writing nonfiction, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's not off the table. A painting book by Anne is not off the table. It never has been. It's just uh, a matter of the time investment and uh, finding the time. And then finding a way how I'm going to publish it because it's going to be an expensive book because these days full color printing is expensive. Yeah, it'd have to have accompanying videos. I mean, some for free. Like, I mean, obviously people could just join my Patreon and yoink a lot of stuff if they wanted to. <laughs> Join for a few months, yoink the videos that you most want and quit, just like people do. But yeah, some accompanying videos, I feel like I would probably have to prioritize. Like, I'd be like, okay, if you watch nothing else. And, and of course, like, like number one's going to be go watch my free YouTube videos, right, for the fundamental stuff. But yeah, I'd do some. All right, I think. There we go. We just got quick. And then these guys over here will do these quick gems. So with these are so little, 
that I'm not really doing like all the fancy highlighting and shading. I'm just like hitting the color and then hitting the um, highlight and we're done. On very small things, you just don't have the room to do some of this. Thanks, Sturgeon. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I like, I super, super do. Where would I be without you guys anyway? Sitting here painting to myself. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> I'd have to sing the Billy Idol song. Painting with myself. But yes, I did actually get some painting done. I, I, I was too excited. I had to talk about the book in the first part of the stream, but but now I, we're back to painting. We're back to sanity, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I'll post it up after we make sure that it's uh, it's all kosher and there's no big glaring issues. Well, I'll post it up to my Patreon and my Facebooks. Oh yeah, we need to do this leather too. I haven't done the, the really cool tool bits on this. Uh, this will be fun to do. We will have to, we'll have to. I kind of have parts of it, but I didn't really do as much on this as I wanted to. Oh, and there's also a gem right there. Duh. Silly little gem clasp. Staring at me in the face. Ah, thanks, Agent Marvel. It's cool. I appreciate it. Book two is almost all finished already. It just needs to, I was rewriting the ending and then it needs editing. Lots of editing, much editing. Most of the time it's editing that takes a long time, not even the writing. All right, there we go. At least we got some indigo there. Sweet. Um, this is an NMM uh, project, Wasser. So I don't cross the streams. Um, it's my personal conviction that when you are doing non-metallic metal on a piece, you should not do metallics. Um, and there are people who disagree with me. That's cool. But uh, the reason that I think that and I demonstrated this a while ago on a, on a golem. Do we still have him? Yeah. So when you put metallics next to non-metallics, essentially what you are doing is you are, it's like trying to do a magic trick on stage and having a guy next to you who is essentially revealing every stage of the magic trick as you do it. So the reason for that is that with NMM, you're trying to create an artificial feel of metallicness, right? But when you've got something next to it that actually has metallics on it, suddenly it, it's like the magician next to you showing everybody what you're doing. So because the metallics will actually, you know, change shine as you move the model and all that, everything that you've done here starts to not, it looks weird. It does not look like metallic anymore though. Um, and this happened on this golem because I started out before I did any of the metallics, I started out doing the, the glow here, the kind of like, I wanted it to be kind of hot. And before I had any metallics on the model, this was actually reading as if it were glowing. But now it just looks like it's been painted with a backdrop. And the reason is that the metallics give the lie to it. So if you're going to create a visual illusion, you have to create the visual illusion over the entire surface. If you put any trace of, of real, onto there, you shatter your illusion. So that's why I would not put metallics onto this model. Does that make sense to you? Uh, 
Like I said, different people have different like opinions on that, but I really find that mixing the two does not work at all. Yeah, yeah. Because you're trying to convince somebody that your NMM is metallic. So when you put a real metallic next to it, it doesn't, you're just, no, no matter, you have to be pretty darn good. Even if you were really good at NMM, I don't think you could pull it off. Because it won't change, right? When you're moving the model, the metallic surface will shift and the NMM surface stays straight. So it just looks weird. Yeah. All right. That's us for today, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me on this most special of days for me. It's my dad's birthday, too. I didn't publish the book for his birthday, but but it just happened to come out that way. Uh, but yeah, so we got the gems done, and uh, that's nice. I like I like these indigo accents. I really like the indigo and how it works with this color scheme. I think it might be it might be my fave part of it. I'm glad I did it. So yeah, good. So yeah, uh, tomorrow. I think uh, tomorrow we do the face on. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we do the face on this lady. We're back to yellow. Our last stream for yellow. Yeah, thanks, Big Eiler. Thanks. Yep, yep. So yeah, I think we've done everything on her, unless we want to do um, some uh, some uh, freehand on the back of her cape, which I'm, I've been thinking about. Been thinking about doing kind of a big sunburst back here. <laughs> thanks, Anonymous. Yes. So yeah. So we're back on her tomorrow. We're finishing up the last bits. Her face is primary. After that, we'll just decide if we're going to be um, doing some freehand back here or if we're just going to call her done and move on to Kathy Wapple because she's Kathy is our replacement mini. Thanks, sweets. I appreciate it. Yeah, if you like epic fairy tale adventure, then uh, check it out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good job. Good job, everybody. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for Yellow Lady. Thanks, Quindy, for riding her down this today. And for linking my book. Yeah. Bye, Wasser. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Awesome.